We're going to take this region bounded by these two given graphs. We're going to rotate it about the y-axis, and we're going to use the shell method to find that volume. The first thing to note is that this top function is the parabola, and this bottom function is the line that's given. Now, if we're going to use shells to rotate this region about the y-axis, what we'll do is we'll split this region vertically, rotate each one of those slices about the y-axis, and we'll get a really thin shell each time. The thickness of each one of these shells is going to be dx. Then what we can do to find the volume is add up all of the volumes of those little shells, and then we'll be finished. So the volume of each one of these shells is just the surface area of the shell multiplied by its thickness dx. The surface area of a shell is given by 2 pi r h, and we're multiplying that again by dx. Now you'll notice from the picture that the radius of each one of these shells is just given by whatever x value I choose between x equals 0 and x equals 3. So this radius is just going to be x. And we can also say that we're going to integrate between x equals 0 and x equals 3. Now the height of each one of these shells, no matter how I slice it, is going to be based on the upper function minus the lower function. In other words, this height is just going to be 3 plus 2x minus x squared minus this lower function, which I'm noticing now we need to solve to give us 3 minus x. Okay, let's plug all that stuff in and see what we get for our volume. I'm going to pull the 2 pi out. Our r we decided was just x, and our h we decided was 3 plus 2x minus x squared, and if we distribute that in minus sign, we get minus 3 plus x. We can simplify that integrand a little bit. The 3's you'll notice cancel. The 2x and the x in the integrand here turn into the 3x. And we can distribute that x through those parentheses to give us 3x squared minus x cubed. And now we can integrate that with respect to x, plug in our limits, and we'll be finished. Here we've integrated, and here we've plugged in the limits of integration. 2 to the 4th power is 16. Multiply that by 1 fourth, and we get 4, 2 pi times 4, I'm getting a final answer of 8 pi. And oh my gosh, I realized I did something wrong all the way at the beginning. You'll actually notice that the largest value of x in the region that's given is 3, not 2. I need a little help reading the graph. So we're going to get rid of this 2 and plug in a 3 for our upper limit of integration everywhere down the line. I apologize for the goof up. 3 cubed is 27. 3 to the 4th is 81. Subtracting these 2 and multiplying by 2 pi gives us 27 pi over 2, which is a much better and much more correct answer. So sorry about that. Hopefully that 0 to 2 limits of integration thing didn't confuse you too much, and you got to the end where you saw the fix. All right, I hope that helped you out.